too. Happy long weekend, everybody. It is Monday, Monday of the long weekend, the Labor Day weekend here in uh, Canada. I think it might be called the Civic Long Weekend in the States. I don't know. Everybody, if you could um, keep me posted in the chat about what your long weekend's called. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is going to be a... Uh, a fun sort of uh, crochet along. We're going to see how how um, fast, uh, not not super speedy, but how quickly I can make a complete ear warmer today. So we're going to make an ear warmer. We tend to make an ear warmer every year. Somebody mentioned in the last live stream that we should do a, an ear warmer with what I have left of this never ending cake of Ferris wheel. <laughs> We made the cowl, we made the beret, we made the, the fingerless gloves. So uh, I'm going to do a cowl because we, or I should say a, an ear warmer because we actually haven't done an ear warmer in the V-stitch yet. So a um, couple things. We're going to talk about yarn you need, hook, needle, scissors, all that good stuff. The pattern, um, as best as I can figure it, is in the description box. So I wrote up the pattern that I'm going to be using today. It's in the description box. We're also going to have a... Uh, version of it available in our shop. It'll be one of the bargain patterns. So we like to try and add some fun patterns to the bargain part of our shop. Uh, but the pattern as I am building it today is in the description box. And if I come up to any little quirks or um, changes, then I will be adjusting it. And that will be the final version that goes in the shop. So a little bit of the um, the process here you kind of get to be part of today. Uh, welcome everyone for dropping in. We're glad to see so many family faces. And of course there's Nico. <laughs> Nico with a gifted membership. Thank you very much, Nico. It looks like Sugar Plum has won it. What a lovely name. And what a lovely, what a lovely thought to go into today's project with Sugar Plum. I mean, golly gee, I'm still thinking fall and Halloween, but Christmas is right on its heels. Okay, everybody, let's get going. We've got instructions for all head sizes today. So if you've got uh, babies, kids, tweens, teens, ladies, adults, custom sizing, we've got it all covered for you today. We're going to explain how to make it custom if you want to really change up your hook and yarn. And all of the, the stitch counts that are in the, the description box pattern are based on a size 4 medium weight yarn and a five and a half millimeter hook, also known as an I or a nine. And like I said, you can drop into the description box and check out all the materials information, plus the pattern at any time today during the live stream. And if people pop in late and you sort of see somebody wondering what's going on, just direct them to the description box for us uh, in case I don't see that in the chat. Mr. In Stitches is here pressing buttons. Hello everyone, good morning, happy long weekend. It is uh, a coffee, coffee sort of morning and um all right let's get started so you can use any fiber you want um i recommend something that feels nice because uh, ear warmers typically go right over your forehead and you don't want anything to itch your forehead or your ears um, i'm going to use up some more of this ferris wheel cake um i think i should have enough to do the entire ear warmer with it and uh, I reckon about 75 yards. Um, so you're going to need less for children and, and babies, obviously. But 75 yards should be more than enough. And I'm also going to just discuss cr briefly the uh, chunky weight yarn option if you were going to do this. Uh, thank you to Tanya, who's gifted a membership. Thank you so much, Tanya. It looks like Kitsune2520 has won it. Congratulations. And Melody, who's been a member for 57 months. Thank you, Melody. Has a membership milestone. She says, I love this pattern set. Happy Monday. Happy Monday indeed. Yeah, we do have the entire set. So we've got the gloves, which we made last stream. We've got the fun little vintage beret that started the whole thing. And we've got the cowl. And not everybody wears, oh golly gee. <laughs> disc, disc has purchased a pattern at our shop. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, not everybody wears a beret, which I understand. So the ear warmer might be the good option. And since it's the fall, you might not want to wear a full hat. Ear warmers are kind of a cool option. So I'm going to use this <laughs> coffee. Annette, thank you for picking up a pattern, Annette. I'm going to use size four weight yarn. Mine's acrylic, but acrylic doesn't really bother me. And this is kind of a soft feeling yarn. If you were going to use a chunky weight yarn, um, 
This would be if you wanted a warmer ear warmer. So this one is kind of got the fall, maybe the spring in mind, but maybe you're the type that likes to wear an ear warmer into the winter before maybe you can tr transition completely to a hat. Um, so this might be a good option for you. You can use the same hook and I'm just going to talk about how to get it to size properly as we get into that. Uh, Claire Bull has actually, she's welcome to Alpaca, but I know you've been a member before because I can see your pretty little uh, icon there. So welcome back, Claire. <laughs> Thank you for joining Alpaca. And let's get started. I'm going to put this to the side. You, you may also want a stitch um, marker and possibly a measuring tape if you're making this for somebody who isn't immediately uh, handy. And we've got um, a pair of scissors and a yarn needle. So the usual things. And let's get going. So we've got in the description box uh, recommended chain numbers for babies, children, tweens, teens, ladies, uh, larger adult sized heads, and custom. So that's the order that they're in. Um, the number of chains you have will also be the same number of stitches you have, but we are using the V-stitch, so we'll be counting it in terms of motifs, and I'll explain that a little bit later, but technically a V-stitch is covers three stitches, a double crochet, a chain one, and a double crochet. So that's technically three stitches, but those three stitches together makes a V-stitch, and it's just easier to count the V-stitch motif all the way around than the individual stitches. So that's how it reads in the pattern. Um, we are all going to start with a slip knot on our hook. If you're making it for a baby, once again, these are numbers based on the hook and yarn size that I'm using and the gauge that I worked out. Um, you want 45 chains for a baby, and I mean like a newborn, not a preemie. 63 for a small child. 69 for a tween, so we're talking 11, 12, 13, a teen, and uh, an adult small. 75 for a larger sized head or a custom number, and that can be any multiple of three. So any multiple of three, no extra chains, as long as it, when turned into a ring, fits snugly over your head around over top of your ears. So the circumference, if you're measuring the circumference of a head, you're going to chain a multiple that is any number of, any multiple of three that um, measures out the circumference measurement. So if you're measuring a head, you grab your measuring tape, you wrap it over top of the forehead, over the ears, and around back of the head, and that gives you your circumference measurement. So I'm going to make the adult small version today. I'm going to chain 69. And people like to ask how to make sure that your uh, foundation chain doesn't twist. I usually just, once I've finished chaining them all, I hold it and I carefully pull it between my thumb and forefinger, making sure that that flat chain always comes out over top of my finger. And if I feel it twisting underneath me, I just slow down and I flatten it out and make sure that it keeps flattening. And then I know that it will have completely untwisted itself. Kimberly, hi Kimberly, with a super sticker. It's an extra cup of coffee, thank you very much. I'll take a sip of that. And I'm gonna count up my chains to sort of see where I'm at here. Let's see. I'm at 46, there's 50, and I need 19 more. All right, there's 69 chains. That's all I need for an adult size small. And if I were to lay this down, so you can't see the whole thing, but you can see that I've laid it down flat. This is another way you can kind of flatten out your foundation chain. You want the, the two loops that run across the top of your stitch all facing up, nice and flat. So that's another way you can sort of lay it down on your work surface and untwist it 
so that the little chain, the two looped part of the chain is facing up and the little bump across the bottom is all down. And without stretching, you would measure it. So for a small adult, uh, tween or teen, etc., it should be around 22 inches if you slightly stretch it uh, because you want a fairly snug fit and everybody's yarn is a little different. So this one is pretty stretchy that I'm using and I did try it before. I know that this will definitely fit over my head when I have it turned into a, a ring. But if you were making it for someone, you want to take that circumference measurement, lay down your measuring tape flat. Let's say you were going for 17 inches and then you would slightly stretch your multiple of three foundation chain and if it gets to that target number, then you know it'll fit snugly around their head. Make sure your foundation chain hasn't twisted. I'm going to do that little trick again where I make sure that I see the chains coming away from my hook and I just slowly run it between my thumb and forefinger, making sure that it doesn't twist. We have a membership renewal from... Kaylin! Big thank you to Kaylin. Thank you, Kaylin. Welcome back to Merino. All right, so I've made sure that my little foundation chain hasn't twisted and I'm going to join with a slip stitch to that first chain. There's the ring. And of course, the other thing you wanna do is just try it on over top of your head to make sure that it fits snugly. So around your forehead, around the back of your head and over top of your ears because this is an ear warmer. If it is too small, then you wanna add three more chains, try again. If it's too big, Take out three chains, try again. And that's how you get it up to a comfortable fit. That's what you want, a nice comfortable fit that's kind of snug that runs over your ears. Remember that with wear, this will stretch out a little bit. So if it's a bit on the snug side to start, that's probably a good thing. Uh, so 45 chains for, like for, for babies, 63 for small children, 69 for tweens, teens, and a ladies or a small adult head. 75 for a man's or a larger adult head, custom number of chains. We've made a ring, we're gonna start the V-stitch. So here we go, right where we joined, we're gonna chain four. The chain four at the beginning of every row counts as a double crochet, chain one, that's the uh, two thirds of a V-stitch made. And into the same place that you joined, you're gonna double crochet. So that's your first double crochet. And just like the other use of this stitch in our previous two patterns, skip two chains, find the third, and work a V-stitch into it. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains, find the third, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And you're gonna repeat that all the way around skip two chains and V-stitch into the third. Now, while you're doing that, I'm gonna talk quickly about the chunkier weight yarn. If you were going to make this to me a little on the warmer side, maybe you want it for the winter, um, you can use a size five chunky weight yarn. It's gonna be a little bit thicker than this. You can stick to the same hook and you can stick to the same foundation chains uh, and all the same rules apply. Don't twist your foundation chain make sure it fits over your head or it measures that custom measurement when slightly stretched. Make sure that, um, that your, your, uh, it, it fits over your head or that your, uh, it fits over the head of the person you're making it for. And if it's too big, take out three chains, try again. If it's too small, add three chains, try again. So it's very flexible. You just wanna make sure you've got that foundation chain of a multiple of three. Then start the pattern the same way, join, make ring, chain four, double crochet in the same place. And the difference will be that your stitches are thicker, a little tighter, maybe a little closer together. It'll basically be warmer, but it shouldn't actually change the sizing too much because we're using the same hook, but it will make for a warmer kind of bulkier headband. So if you want to use the, the heavier weight yarn to make a warmer ear warmer, then that's the same, all the same rules apply and you can use the same hook. If for some reason you find that the hook just works out to be too tight and your stitching is like too, too squiggly or it, it ripples or you just don't like the way it looks, you can switch up to a larger hook and all the same rules apply. So make sure it's a multiple of three, make sure it fits, etc, etc. 
and then you work a V stitch or a double crochet, chain one, double crochet into every third chain all the way around. And the number of V stitches you will have in every single row will be a uh, the, the same number that you would sort of, if you took your foundation chain and divided it by three, that's the number of V stitches you'll have. So based on the foundation chains that I've written down in the description box, for babies, you should have 15 V stitches. For children or smaller, smaller child heads, 21 V stitches. For tweens, teens, and ladies, 23 V stitches. For larger adult heads, 25 V stitches. And your custom number, if you're using a custom foundation chain, is your foundation chain number divided by three. Can you repeat to us all watching um, what those two yarns are you're showing? So I know the one you're working with is Lion Brand Ferris wheel? Yep, yep. So this and is... And the other one, the thicker one that's more on the purple? This is Ferris wheel. This one, oh, help me out, guys. I What was the name of it? I made the big winter hat out of it a couple of live streams ago. It's um. It's a it's a funny yarn. I've never heard of it. I've never bought any other of it before. Oh, uh, I can't remember what it's called, and I don't know what I did with the tag. <laughs> it it'll be it'll be um in a few streams ago. It'll be yeah, it's a few streams like maybe, ago. Maybe what two or three live streams ago. The tag will be in that video. <laughs> yes, it's uh the tag's in the very beginning of that video. I can't. It's something. I want to say like a jewel or. Something like, I don't know, I'm so terrible with names of stuff. Uh, but yeah, we did show this, the, the label in a previous live stream. It's just that I've never bought that yarn before, so I'm not familiar Someone with in it. the chat might remember what it was called. Um, we have a membership milestone. Deanna, who's been a member for three months, thank you Deanna, says, can this be made with a super chunky or a size six yarn? So the answer is yes. Um, You'll have to adjust your hook size accordingly, but because you're getting away from what I would consider um, ma 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 malleable, malleable yarns for this kind of pattern, um, a V-stitch pattern can still be worked using a super bulky size six. But the thing with the super bulky and the jumbo yarn categories is that those categories start to cover a really large array of, of weight. So some size six super chunky or super bulky weight yarns will still work quite comfortably with this pattern, but you might need to use a bigger hook. Um, and you'll probably need to do much, many fewer rows, and you'll probably need to make many fewer foundation chains because the bulky, the super bulky weight category is I want to say a couple of orders of magnitude larger than just the natural progression of say lightweight to medium weight to Aran or chunky weight yarn. The super bulky weight category is is kind of getting to the point of more blanket or heavy super heavy weight yarn, craft yarns. Now not all of them, some of them are would might be just perfect for this. But because of the how much bigger it is, and you're definitely going to want to use a bigger hook, you're going to need fewer chains in your foundation row, and probably many fewer rows, um, just to get up to the height of ear coverage that you want. Uh, but I would recommend doing a small sampler with your preferred yarn and hook before you get going. Make a short chain of, say, 12 chains, and just work out... Um, work the pattern very very small in those 12 to eh, maybe 15 chains if you're using a really bulky weight yarn and just see what you think is it too thick for your head is it like super plush and you love it you know those are decisions you've got to make um with the chosen hook and yarn but absolutely this same pattern concept will work for just about any yarn you just have to decide if you like the way it looks on your head or not so good question deanna thank you uh when you get all the way back to the beginning You'll have two chains left to skip. That's our our false stitch that sits at the bottom of the chain four. We always get a false stitch when we work in the round, joining rows as we go, so just ignore that. What you're really concerned about is having two stitches left to skip. Find the third chain of the chain four that began the entire row and slip stitch to join. So just like every other use of our V-stitch so far. And you might want to try it on again, just to make sure that you haven't tightened up or you haven't gotten super loose. If your stitching is too tight, but your foundation chain felt good, then try using a larger hook. 
If your uh, first row is a little on the tight or on the loose side and you don't want it to get any looser, then try using a smaller hook. So you can adjust your tension as you go. Crochet with Diane, a member for 37 months. Hi, Diane. I'm making this ear warmer. I pre I've got, oh, with Premier Basics. Awesome. I love ear warmers. It's, it's, I find I will often throw one of those on if I'm going for a stroll in the fall, just because I don't like cool air entering my ears. Does that make sense? But sometimes I don't want to wear an entire hat because I feel like that's too much heat. <laughs> So does Olivia Diamond something ring a bell? Oh Olivia my gosh. Olivia Diamond Select. Yes. Who okay. said that? So Pat. Pat found it. Pat, thank you. Awesome. It, that's, it yes, that's what it was. the live stream. Big thank you to everyone in the chat. The live stream from August 19th. Yes. That was my new winter cap, which is right here. Let me grab that. This is the hat we made using that lovely, big, chunky yarn. Oh, I really like this. This is a cozy winter hat. I'll be wearing that a lot. And look how much I still had left over. Um, so yeah, Olivia Diamond, yes. So it's the winter hat live stream. It's the winter hat. It's our easy, perfect three, fit hat. two to three weeks ago. Yeah. Um, made a, a really nice winter hat out of that. And um, big thank you to all our detectives out yes. there in the chat box. You guys are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, when you get to the end of the row, you slip stitch to join in the third chain, immediately slip stitch into the space of that V-stitch because we're gonna use that stacked or aligned V-stitch pattern like we've been doing for the previous projects. And you start row two, right where you are in that middle of a V-stitch, chain four, double crochet into the same place that puts your first V-stitch of the row right on top of the previous one. Now that we're into row two, you might find it helpful to mark that first V-stitch or that chain four with a stitch marker, especially if you find like your stuff tends to lean or you kind of turn your brain off when you're working the V-stitch. You don't want to miss that that's the beginning of the row. Sometimes you might just think it's the next V-stitch and work into it. So that stops us from accidentally losing place of the first part of our row. Then you're just looking for the next V-stitch Double crochet, chain one, double crochet in it. Big thank you to Webster Judith for joining our Merino memberships. Hi, Judith. Thank you so much for joining. And then all of your V-stitches will sit directly on top of the V-stitch from the previous row. You'll have the same number of V-stitches in every single row. This is why ear warmers are so much fun to make. You basically just establish the foundation row, then you work your pattern and there is no increasing and no decreasing. It is one of the easiest, quickest projects to make. Ear warmers are really handy for lots of people. Um, they're a great little thing to give to donation if you are into making donation um, clothing for people who are um, in need. A, an ear warmer is sometimes a better option than a hat. Um, they can be a little stretchier, they might fit more people, and then sometimes they're a better option for people who you know maybe have a lot of hair or just don't like the feeling of having too much heat on their head. I know, uh, I know a lot of men who would prefer to wear an ear warmer and not a hat. Just gonna work my way around here. Now I've settled into that lovely V-stitch pattern, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all in the same place. And if I was using the thicker yarn, I'll just pause for a second and show you what that looks like. So let me grab that yarn. So if you're using the thicker weight yarn, but this stuff is so pretty, I'll show you what you can do to sort of check your gauge. Same thing, chain any multiple of three to start. I'll do 15. Join to make a ring, because you will be working in a ring. 
And it doesn't have to be the full size, obviously, of the head because you're just we're checking your gauge and checking your stitch sizing. So I'm using the same hook size and now I'm using a thicker weight yarn. I'm going to work that little pattern, skip two chains, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And usually one or two rows is probably enough to decide if um, this has got a little knot in it. How dare you? How dare you knot up on me? So same size hook, and this yarn is from the weight category one up from the yarn I'm using right now. And I would consider this a very nice winter headwear style of yarn, just because of the thickness of it. This particular yarn is, yarn is very pretty, uh, but it's very thick. And I'm just gonna work the first row so you can sort of see the difference. So there's, there is um, the first row of V-stitches. So same hook size, same stitch. And that's how it compares to the size four weight. So this is what I'm actually making my, my ear warmer in. And that's what it would look like if I was using the bulky weight yarn. So it'll be a bit thicker it'll be much warmer. The spaces in between my V-stitches will be a little less pronounced, which is nicer if you're gonna make it for cooler weather, um, but it will be just as snug and comfortable and that pattern and that hook size works just as well. So I don't have any awkward bunching of stitches. So I feel like you can easily go up to the size five weight category with the same hook just to get a nicer kind of cozier, warmer ear warmer if that's what you're after. So that's what that would look like. We have a new poll that is up and suggested by Krista. Okay. So I've popped it up if anyone would like to take part. Krista has suggested a new poll. Krista which... has suggested a poll. Um, the pattern that I'm using today is in the description box. So if you're wondering what the stitch count is or how many rows or what foundation chain to start with depending on who you're making it for um, you can refer back to the description box at any time and if you have trouble finding the description box all of our software varies a little bit but typically if you tap on the title um, of the video if you're on a tablet or a phone you might even see um, dot 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 more after the words how many watching when it was started or the date of the video tap on that and it should open up the entire description box and that's where you'll find links and pattern notes and all sorts of information so same number of v stitches or stitches in general same number of motifs in every row when you get back to the beginning you join with a slip stitch to that third chain of the chain four that continues that v stitch look <laughs> and that's row two so we are well on our way. For babies, I recommend three or four rows, maybe four rows of the V-stitch. Um, it doesn't have to be very tall. And of course, if you're making it for a very small baby, then maybe only three rows will do. Uh, four for, you know, 12, up to 12 months, maybe even up to 18 months. Um, they don't have super gigantic ears. <laughs> They've got little ears. If you're making them for children, and I'm thinking children are eh, toddlers and up to about eight or nine, then I recommend five rows of the V-stitch. And for tweens, teens, adults, everybody else, six rows. Now again, this is fully customizable. The number of rows does not matter. It's what you want to do is to get up to a an ear coverage that fits comfortably. This is our brick stitch ear warmer that we made last year. And this one is for an adult and it's about three and a half to four inches in depth. And that's for a nice cozy ear warmer. It'll cover the ear and then a little bit more. So that's what you're looking for. Cover the ear and a little bit more. I'd like to shout out Candy Keith for joining our Silk membership. Big thank you. Welcome Candy. Candy has joined our membership at the Silk Level. Thank you, Candy. And Deanna has gifted a membership. Thank you so much, Deanna. It looks like Gloria has won it. Congratulations, Gloria. 
thank you guys so much. Oh my gosh, and Ron and Kathy Jones are in the house. Hello, you two. Thank you so much with this super generous oh, super chat. Oh my goodness. Good a morning. Super, super chat from <laughs> Kathy and Ron. The thank super, you. super chat. Good morning. What a wonderful way to spend our Monday mornings. Jada and Mr. and Stitches, you are an encouragement to us. Aww, thank you. Love you both, Ron and Kathy. Thank you both so much. It is lovely to spend our, our Monday mornings. And did you shout out Deanna for I the did. gifted membership? I did indeed. Okay. And I'll say thank you again to everybody. <laughs> Gonna mark that first stitch just so I don't lose it on the way back around. I've just come, I'm working through my third row now and I know that six rows will be deep enough for me. So if double whatever that is, if you get to the third row and you're gonna make it for an adult, uh, measure this, multiply that by two, and that should be your final finished uh, ear coverage. If you get to that point, say six rows, and it's close to being enough, but you don't really wanna do another row of V-stitch, then you can always do what we did with the fingerless gloves, which is work a row of single crochet around the top and the bottom. I am not going to bother with that today. You don't always have to do finishing rows on little projects like this. I didn't do that on the cowl, um, but you're more than welcome to add a row of single crochet or half double crochet even around the top and bottom. Um, if you wanted to just give it a slightly more finished look or a firmer edge, not everybody's yarn is the same. So that's an option to you. And that, as if you use single crochet, it won't make it much wider, but it will give it just a little bit extra if that's what you're looking for. And Deborah has joined our family at the alpaca level. Thank you so much for joining, Deborah. Welcome to the family. I like how fast the V stitch is. I think we had a conversation about this a while ago about what stitch do you find the fastest to make? Rosemary, thank you so much for picking up a couple patterns at our shop. We really appreciate the support. Um, I find the double crochet stitch to be the fastest. So I would love to know what stitch you guys think is the fastest to do. It's one of the reasons I like the double crochet V stitch because I feel like I can really fly through it. I uh, have not forgotten about the leg warmers. I know a couple people were asking about those, but uh, what I want to do for the leg warmer live stream is have one ready so I can kind of refer back to it while we're doing it and then make the other one during the live stream because leg warmers are identical pairs of things. Um, but to be perfectly honest, I had some trouble with my wrist this weekend and I didn't have it in me to build an entire leg warmer. <laughs> so we're going to delay that. Join to the third chain of the chain four to finish the row. There I would like is three to, rows. Um, humbly remind everyone to please click the like button mm -hmm. if you are having fun. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And all the lurkers out there are welcome to click the like button and take part in the chat. But Big you hello can to do the it lurkers. from around the corner. Just mm -hmm. reach your finger over and just tap away. You don't have to. You don't have to leave the uh, the, the hallway. <laughs> I finished three rows of the V-stitch pattern. I've given it a measure of about one and, and three quarter inches, or uh, what was that about four and a half, four and a half centimeters. So that's a pretty nice um, depth to be at halfway through for adults. I'm going to do six rows in total. So. Slip stitch to join in the third chain, slip stitch into the middle of the V-stitch, chain four, double crochet in the same place, and off you go. It gets faster and faster with every row. Sort of seeing everybody's quick stitches mentioned here. Some of you like the double crochet and the V-stitch. Some of you find the half double crochet fastest. That's a good one too. I find, I, I really like the half double crochet, but I find that my, th my hook can get caught halfway through that one 
more frequently than for some reason I get it caught doing the double crochet, but that could be my grip and my crochet style. I am a knife grip um, and I've come to realize that your grip does determine a lot of the way, like sort of how fast some stitches are made. Uh, my mother-in-law can really zip through some of the smaller stitches faster than I can and she is a pencil grip and I'm thinking that might have something to do with it. I don't know, more research is required I think. We have found ourselves in September already, everybody. I just, I, I feel like the summer was extra short this year. <laughs> I know technically, as far as the calendar is concerned, we're still in the summer. But uh, really, as soon as this long weekend rolls around, the, the Labor Day weekend, um, the summer's done in my brain and it starts to smell like fall pretty much immediately. So that uh, I'm sure has something to do with where we're located on this planet, but <laughs> it is definitely the summer, the hot, hot, sweltering summer weather is. The day you see that one leaf just slowly float its way down to the, to the lawn. Yes. And you go, no! <laughs> like that commercial from mm -hmm. the 2000s. When was, when was that commercial? I don't know, but that was the most 2000s? accurate. 2000s? Commercial I think I've ever seen. You I, guys, I you, forget what it was about. I have no idea what it was for, but I remember it was it was this woman. She was out taking like she's power walking down a sidewalk, and she's got this giant smile on her face, and she just looks like she's full of life and happiness, and it's an absolutely gorgeous day around her, and the grass is green, and the birds are chirping, and she suddenly stops and screams bloody blue murder and points, and it's this it's this like leaf as <laughs> this dead leaf sitting on the on the sidewalk in front of her. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what it feels like. <laughs> One of our Canadian friends will will remember that commercial. Yes. I forget what it was about, but yes, you described it perfectly. That's exactly what it was. Melissa's asking about the needle holder pattern. Melissa, I have not finished with it yet. I had to sort of shelve it while I was doing some other things, but it is staring me in the face over there on the corner of the craft table. So it's not gone yet. Uh, I will still definitely be doing that, but um, had to had to shelve it for other other projects. And also, um, I, I sometimes need to take a break from the smaller hook stuff, as much as I don't like to. But my lately, I've found um, uh, I'm I'm quite comfortable working with my usual hook sizes. But anything smaller, I just I, I've been dropping it too much. I, I seem to have some some. Uh, um, grip issues lately. So I eh, just shelved it for a little while, but haven't completely forgotten about it. I will definitely get that finished as soon as my, my hands allow. <laughs> and I am going to possibly be playing a little bit of yarn chicken here. We shall see. This, uh, cake of ferris wheel just seemed to be never ending so i'm i'm gonna see if i can squeeze this ear warmer out i'm pretty sure i can i've got one more row of v-stitch to do and then i'm gonna make a little pincher because i like to have um, a slight pinch in the front of the ear warmer so that it kind of sits up over top of my forehead and it doesn't crush my eyebrows I don't like eyebrow fatigue. <laughs> All right, everyone, last chance for the poll. I'm going to uh, send it over to Jada in about uh, 10 or 20 seconds. Uh, Summer, to answer your question, no, that, that naughty wall hanging that I can't, I can't bring myself to finish is actually tucked in a closet, so it doesn't stare at me. It only stares at me and angrily when I open the closet. <laughs> That one work in progress, I just can't bring myself to do. All right, one, two, three, four, five. That's five rows. I'm going to slip stitch into the next space. 
chain four, double crochet in the same place. And I've got one more row of V-stitch. I'm playing an, a little tiny bit of yarn chicken, but I think I can do it. And then I need to build my little ear warmer pincher. So it looks like Georgie may have found the commercial and says it's KFC. It's KFC? Do you remember it being KFC? I don't remember that. I never would have guessed that in a million years. I will have to look that up afterwards. But good good find yeah that's hilarious and we have a gifted membership from nico 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 with the gifted membership thank you so much nico and tracy has won it congratulations tracy this is great thank you so much i uh i i thought that i i think about that that commercial every year so whoever <laughs> whoever wrote that commercial <laughs> what because you live in Canada. Yes. Uh, whoever wrote that commercial um, nailed a cultural signif like significant thing, but kind of missed the mark in terms of selling the product because I didn't remember who the producters were. <laughs> yep, I'm going to do it. I'm going to have more than enough again. Wow, this cake is magic. The never-ending cake. I'll have gotten... Okay, I'm sending the poll over your way. Oh, okay. This was suggested by Krista. Uh, Claire's asking, how would we twist this? Well, you'd have to make it back and forth, back and forth, not in a ring like I'm doing, and then twist once and then seam it. But I'm not going to twist it. I'm going to pinch it instead. Um, does your spouse or partner wear crochet stuff you make for them? No, 48%. Yes, 46%. By brute force, 4%. <laughs> yep, that's about right. Half and half. Roughly 50-50. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I will have gotten with now I have to admit there was a slightly small amount of yarn left over from a previous cake of the same colorway but not enough to really not enough to really mention I have to say I will have gotten a beret a full cowl a pair of fingerless gloves and an ear warmer essentially out of a single cake of yarn that is crazy here we are I have finished row six that's it. I'm going to join to the third chain. That is my ear warmer. Completely done. It's nice and stretchy so it'll fit over my head. I am not going to bother doing a row of single crochet around the top and a row around the bottom. If you want to see what that looks like, you can check out the live um, crochet along we did with the fingerless gloves or the, the tutorial. We did a recap tutorial on the fingerless gloves um, and you can see what that looks like worked across this v-stitch pattern on the top and the bottom it's absolutely identical um, in terms of of how it would work but i don't really feel i need it i'm more interested in creating my little pinch so i'm going to go ahead and make the little pincher i'm going to snip my yarn fasten off i think i'll weave in my tails quickly so i'm going to flip this inside out and just quickly weave my tails in When you're not sort of sitting here chit-chatting like I am and you're actually really focusing and working, you know, and working quickly, you can make up one of these little ear warmers very fast. And of course, the more comfortable you get with the pattern, the faster it gets. So if uh, you know people who like to wear pretty little ear warmers in the fall, then this is a really nice gift. Um, it's also just a nice gift for donation, like I was saying, because a lot of people kind of find ear warmers to be uh, preferable to hats. Sometimes they wear them underneath a hat if it's really, really cold and they want extra protection against their ears. It's also just nice to kind of keep your hair under control on a blustery day. Maybe it, you'll just put on an ear warmer uh, headband as opposed to a whole hat just to kind of keep your hair out of your face. 
So lots of lots of use for them. Um, this pattern has the has a seam. You can sometimes, if you look hard, you can sort of see where we joined every row, and then uh, that's your chain three to join. So if you want, you can make that the front and hide it with the ear pincher, and I like to do that. So I'm going to make this the very front that I hide underneath my little pincher, and I have a pincher pattern too. It's a very simple, quick thing. It's the same for any of the ear warmers. Um, it's just the row count that changes. So the pincher is the little tiny like band that runs around the front to keep the, the front of your ear warmer pinched. Um, and last year we made it and we decorated. So there's the pincher and then we put a cute little sunflower on top of it. I really like how that looks. That was very fallish. We have a question from Hope at Painted Fox Gifts. Okay. Jada, what hook to use for DK3 weight yarn? I have lots given to me for charity projects and can only make so many hats. Um, for the, the lightweight yarn, um, I would recommend the same hook for to follow this pattern. And then do exactly the same thing in terms of a gauge that I did with the thick the thicker yarn. So work... 15 chains say join it in a circle and work the v-stitch pattern just like we did here for the full ear warmer and then take a look at it and decide do you like the spaces do you like the size of the v-stitch does it look too lacy or too holy does it look relatively like fine you can stick with that hook if you don't like the if you feel like it's too loose or too holy then go down a hook size maybe use the size five millimeter maybe even maybe even the four and a half millimeter. You may end up having to chain more, but that's okay. You just need a foundation chain that is any multiple of three that fits your measurements. And then you will probably get away with the same number of rows, but if you need another row to get up to the right height, that's fine too. So um, absolutely, you can use the lightweight DK weight yarn. Um, and I would recommend starting with the same hook size, but if that's too big, then just go down half a hook size to the five millimeter. And that might be just enough because um, I'd say that this for the difference between a lot of four weights and three weights is very, very small. Um, unlike the difference between a five weight and a six weight. I feel like the difference between a five weight category and six weight category is much, much bigger than the difference between a three and a four weight category. So I would stick with this hook. Um, give it a quick little gauge sampler. See if you like it and um, change your hook from there. But you can definitely use that that yarn for sure. Um, to make the pincher, the little pincher wrap, start with a slip knot on your hook, chain five. Same for children and adults. We're going to use a single crochet stitch here, so we're going to skip the first chain from the hook, single crochet into the second chain, single crochet into the remaining three chains. That gives us four stitches at the end of the row. We're going to have four stitches in each row. Chain one turn, single crochet in each of those stitches across and you're going to chain one turn single crochet in each of those four stitches for nine rows for babies and children 11 rows for everybody else and this just makes us a little tiny rectangle of fabric nothing complicated and it will keep our pinched headband in place. So Tammy says, I made the big, beautiful basket and entered it into our fair. I got the blue first place ribbon. Hey! Thank you for the pattern. I love making it. Awesome. Yeah. You know, we're getting a lot of stories of uh, Jada's patterns winning fair ribbons. That's, I think it's great. That's so cool. Um, I think the folk art blanket won somewhere. Yep. Uh, Jada's won... Uh, Jada's won some first place stuff too. I've won some some ribbons. Yeah, yes. that's great. Yeah, congratulations. That's fantastic. That's so exciting. I love fall fairs. I haven't entered anything in the fall fair though in a long time. Oh, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So one more row of single crochet. And then once you've done nine rows for children and babies or 11 rows for adults or everybody that's left, leave a long tail, fasten off, weave in that short tail just to get it out of our way. Some of our lurkers have joined the party. <laughs> Welcome. They've come into the main room. Welcome, lurkers. We love our lurkers. I have to admit, I am usually a lurker when I'm watching a live stream. Okay, there's our little pincher. Very simple piece of rectangle fabric. And now I'm going to pinch my headband. So I'm going to just pinch it once in the middle, fold the top down, fold the bottom up. So I have a nice neat little pinch just like that. I'm going to place my pincher around the front of it and then I'm going to hold the two ends together on the other side and this isn't a big deal. I can spin it around later if I if I feel like it's moved while I was sewing. I'm going to thread up that long tail and sew the two edges together. Those are the short edges of the pincher. There's four rows or four stitches in each edge so I'm only going to do four whip stitches. Sally Lee, a member for 10 months. Thank you, Sally, for the membership milestone. Hello, I'm so happy I could make this live on my birthday. Happy birthday. You are such an inspiration. Thank you, Sally Lee, and happy birthday. That is lovely. I'm glad you're spending your birthday with us. That makes me feel pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so that's my little pincher sewn together. I'll do one more little row of finishing over here, or I should say one stitch. Make sure that it hasn't spun on me. Oh, it looks like a bow. I love that look so much. It is so cute. Um, you don't have to do this if you're, especially if you're making it for a guy, they might not um, care to have the bow look. <laughs> Um, but you'll have to use the brute force approach. You might have to use the brute force yeah. approach, but but this is a, a very uh, nice way to finish off a head a hair or a headband or an ear warmer because it keeps it up off your forehead so that your eyebrows don't get fatigued. I know that might sound funny, but I can't stand the feeling of anything rubbing against my eyebrows for very long. <laughs> now to keep it from spinning, you can just um, sew a couple of um, stay stitches through the actual headband at the back where it's pinched just to kind of keep it from moving and then maybe one through the middle of the thing and another couple out here this is just to keep it from spinning around on you and then back out here and then just make a little knot nothing nothing major and you can weave that tail in back and forth a little bit. Don't make a knot that's going to rub against your forehead. If you're using a bulky weight yarn, you might just find weaving your tail in and out back and forth across some of the stitches in that pincher is a better idea and it, it won't come undone. Um, just go back and forth several times and it, it will be unlikely to work its way out. I'll do it three times here. There we go. Trim any excess. And there is my V-stitch ear warmer all done. That of course matches my fingerless gloves and my cowl. And if it gets too cold, I'll whip out the beret. <laughs> and would you believe I still, still have some of that yarn left? You can make me socks. Not with that. Toe socks. Toe socks. You like cotton though, socks. I do. Yeah. I prefer cotton. So this They're is bamboo. a bamboo. I like the bamboo socks. They're oh yes, nice. the bamboo's nice. So there we go. A very easy to make, quick, simple, uh, sweet little headband. There's lots of finishing options. You could do a row of single crochet around the top and the bottom before you make the pincher. You could leave off the pincher. You could add a little uh, something to the front. You could embroider a little something there. Um, add a little a little applique like we did last year with our our little um sunflower i just think that's so cute you could leave it plain 
You could also just pinch it and run your, your needle through it a couple times and not bother with the little pincher wrap. Um, lots of options. It is that lovely, simple, repeating V-stitch. It is so easy. There's a lot of nice stretch to that. And um, it's just the right amount of ear coverage for the cool weather. I like this in the fall. I like it in the spring. Um, now I've got I've got a complete set. I've got more than a complete set. I have a I have a, a beret option and an ear warmer option to wear with my cowl and my fingerless gloves. Love it. Does anyone have any questions about today's little crochet along? Have you ever made socks with fine yarn? I have not crocheted or knit any socks with fine yarn. I have made plenty of slippers and slipper style socks and baby booties. Um, but not with fine yarn, no. Um, and uh, not for any Mel reason other than I just haven't really gotten around to it. <laughs> uh, Melissa asked if we were going to continue the Monday morning live streams. Uh, we're yes. heading into fall. We're heading into fall. The mister and I are working on getting a fall schedule put together. Um, technically, we're still in the summer, so um, I haven't fully haven't fully put, can, transitioned to this, the, the fall yet, but um, we'll see, we'll see. Our, our schedule, um, our schedule has been pretty, pretty stable. So um, this has been, this has been working out well for us. We'll, we'll see, we'll see how it, how it goes. But if we do make any big changes, obviously we'll, we'll mention it. <laughs> do you know, Vivi, do you know the books Aunt Green, Aunt Brune, and Aunt Grendelin? Grendelin? The books Aunt... Vivi asks if you could make a hat from the books, Aunt Green, Aunt Brune, and Aunt Gren Gredelin. Aunt, I have never heard of these. I've books. never heard of those either. The names sound familiar, though. Aunt Green, Aunt. No, I've never. I'll have to look them up. I've never. I've never heard of them. Are they? Um... I'm gonna see if I can find that that comment so I can read it. Aunt Vivi, uh, I would love it if you could make a hat in the books Aunt Green, Aunt Brune, and Aunt Gretelin. I've never heard of it, Vivi. Um, who who uh, who wrote them? Are they are they are? Can I get them in English? I don't know. I've never heard of them before. A little more information. Oh, it's a Swedish book. Oh, Swedish. Is there is there an English transition translate? I love a good book. Um. Now you've got me curious. I'll have to look up those books after the live stream. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go, everybody. Um, we will have our regular video for you this Friday. Um, thank you all for hanging out with us. The pattern notes will be in the description box of this live stream. They will stay there. So if you want to come back and check it out, um, feel free to do so. We're going to write up a slightly more accurate version of the pattern. And we'll have a pattern for sale in the bargain category of our Etsy shop a little later today. So if you want to pick up a copy of the pattern, it'll be a single sheet uh, style and it'll be um, what we consider one of our bargain patterns. So if you're kind of, you know, adding to your collection, um, it's a great way to help support us. And um, it'll be the entire pattern with, in, with all the instructions for children, adults, kids, etc. Um, plus gauge information and stuff. And thank you all so much for hanging out with us. We will definitely be live streaming next Monday because we're technically still in the summer and it might be the leg warmers. We'll see how my wrist holds out. Catherine, thank you so much for picking up a pattern. <laughs> um, Aunt Green, Aunt Brown and Aunt Lavender, says Nico. Okay. Uh, yeah, Jada learned Swedish to read these books. Crochet crazy. I would. I would literally learn another language to read books. I did that once. I learned German so I could read books in German. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to go back through this whole chat and read everything. I gotta look. Okay, Vivi, I will look up those books because now you have me curious. I love hats and I love books. So those, those two things definitely have my attention. Um, guys, have a wonderful week. We keep an eye on the community tab. We'll do a little bit of posting like we normally do. Um, thanks to everybody who popped into our shop this weekend and picked up a copy of our new Fair Isle pattern, either or or both. We've got um, the chain link pattern and the acorn. We have a couple more Fair Isle style plus patterns coming. Plus, we will have one uh, for the Silk and Vicuña members. That's one of the perks. 
uh, for this month and um, we'll keep you posted in the community tab like we usually do here. I hope you all enjoyed making this along with us um, and if you did, please feel free to share a pattern picture at our Etsy shop because uh, it's really fun sharing everybody's pictures with the community. I love, <laughs> I love what you guys come up with. Uh, and I love the color combinations that you, you choose. So we'll also have some more fun pictures of everybody's to share this week. That's coming as well. Um, have a wonderful rest of your long weekend to everybody in Canada and the U.S. And to everyone else watching from everywhere else, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Enjoy your week, and we will see you all Friday. Mr. Stitches, anything you want to uh, add? Just bye, everyone. Yeah. And we'll see you <laughs> we'll at the end of the week. <laughs> bye. Bye, everybody.